Most users of Linux and Unix nowadays are quite familiar with the X window system, the display server that has powered our graphical workstations for, for decades in one iteration or another. The window system X, as it was initially called, was created as a fork of another window system known as W back in June of 1984. Uh, here, here's the announcement email of the Windows System X from Robert Schieffler at MIT. I've spent the last couple of weeks writing a Windows system for the VS100. I stole a fair amount of code from W, surrounded it with asynchronous rather than synchronous interface, and I called it X. Overall performance appears to be about twice that of W. The code seems very solid at this point, although there are still some deficiencies to be fixed up. We at LCS have stopped using W and are now actively building applications on X. Anyone else using W should seriously consider switching. This is not the ultimate Windows system, but I believe it is a good starting point for experimentation. Right at the moment, there is a CLU and an Argus interface to X. A C interface is in the works. The three existing applications are a text editor, TED, an Argus IO interface, and a primitive window manager. There is no documentation yet. Anyone crazy enough to volunteer? I may get around to it eventually. Anyone interested in seeing a demo can drop by NE43-531, although you may want to call 3-1945 first. Anyone who wants the code can come by with a tape. Anyone interested in hacking deficiencies, feel free to get in touch. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. So, what exactly is W? And now that we know, now that we know that W is the inspiration and the original source code for X, wouldn't it be amazing to know more about W? How it worked, what it looked like, and that sort of thing. Finding detailed information on the W window system is astoundingly difficult. In fact, almost every mention of W seems to consist entirely of variations on the following text, which I found this over on Wikipedia. Quote, the W windowing system is a discontinued windowing system and precursor in name and concept to the modern X window sy system window system. <laughs> W was originally developed at Stanford by Paul Ascente and Brian Reed for the V operating system. In 1983, Paul Ascente and Chris Kent ported the system to Unix on the VS100, giving a copy to those working at MIT's Laboratory for Computer Science. In 1984, Bob Schieffler at MIT replaced the, the synchronous portions of W with an asynchronous alternative and named a result X. Since this time, th since this time, the X window system has gone through many fundamental changes and no longer bears any significant resemblance to W. And that's it. That's what we get. Screenshots, technical details, documentation. Nope. None of that. <laughs> no, it's ridiculous. Now, now, just a fun side note. The Wikipedia entry for W, <laughs> which I quoted above includes a link to an email thread that, at first glance, appears to be discussing the W from the early 1980s. But here's the thing. It's not. <laughs> what that thread is referring to, what Wikipedia is referring to, is a completely different Windows system from the 1990s, which, as it happens, also was named W. That window system looked like this. <laughs> this is not, by the way, the W windowing system from the 1980s. Not, not at all. No relation whatsoever. What's wild is there is significantly more information about this 1990s window server, which very few people have ever actually used, than there is about the deeply historically significant 1980s W. Okay, okay, great. So what do we actually know about the original W? Well, 
we know that W is a windowing system developed originally for the V distributed operating system. Now the V distributed system, sometimes just called V system, was developed at Stanford starting in 1981. It had its own display system called Virtual Graphics Terminal Service or VGTS. Um, files and some source code from V have been archived by the wonderful folks over at bitsavers.org. And those archives do contain a piece of software called W. But once again, <laughs> seriously, it is not the 1980s display server W. The W software contained in the V archives is a command which lists users connected to the V system. The name of the W window system was chosen because it ran on V. W was the next in alphabetical order, which is also why X window system is called X. It is the next letter after W. Right? You see how that see how that works? It's very, very fancy. Now in 1983, W Windows System was ported to the VAC Station 100 and hence to Unix. Okay, okay. Let's let's follow this along. Let's look at the VAC Station 100. Uh, here, here's a VAC Station 100. Now, hey, hey now, what have we here? Is that a graphical desktop I see? Could this be the, the elusive W window system that inspired X? Let's take a closer look at another page from the VAC Station 100 technical summary. Okay, after reading absolutely everything in the technical summary, there is no mention at all of W. Instead, the graphical interface is called the VAC Station Display System Software. This is continued in the VAC Station 100 user guide, which was published in June of 1984. The illustrations in that document appear to match the photos in the technical summary document. Now, this appears to be the only reference to VAC Station Display System in existence. However, in October of 1984, just a few months after these documents were published, the VAC Station 1 was released, and with it the first possibly official graphical desktop for VACs and VMS systems called VMS Workstation Software, also known as VWS. Now, according to Wikipedia, which tends to be wrong as we have pointed out, the VMS Workstation Software was not released before October of 1984, which leaves us with a few possibilities. Number one, Wikipedia is wrong. It often is, so we just need to deal with that. Number two, the VAC Station Display System is an earlier name for the VMS Workstation software. It does only precede it by a few months, after all. And number three, possibly, the VAC Station Display System is simply W, which was developed the year before the documentation that we just talked about, but rebranded. Now, the likelihood is that the VAC Station Display System is just a different terminology for VMS Workstation software that was used in documentation a few months before the release of the VAC Station 1, but that is purely conjecture based on the available data. So, how do we find out more about W? The unfortunate reality is this. In order to get W running, we need, number one, a way to properly emulate a 1983 or 1984 version of the V distributed operating system developed at Stanford and a copy of W. Or, number one, we need a working VAC Station 100 and a copy of W. Either way, we need a copy of W, which we don't have. Case in point, the W Windows system doesn't seem to exist anywhere on the entire internet, either in binary or source code form. In short, here is what we don't know about W. We don't know with any certainty what W looked like, how W functioned, and what specifically was changed between W and X. 
If any of you have additional details, I would love to hear about it. The fact that such a critical part of computing history is largely lost is a sad thing, one that deserves to be rectified. Now, I, this is this is an article that I wrote uh, some time back because I have been on this quest to properly document some of the critically historically important pieces of computing history for for quite some time. And it absolutely boggles my mind how difficult it has been to find even the tiniest little morsels of history about W. The, the reality is, and this is this is bonkers to me. This article that I just read for you is, as it stands right now, the definitive work on the history of the Windows of the Windows system that that spawned X Windows. Most of the information, most of the verifiable information about that exists in this article, and nowhere else. I mean, w- Wikipedia friggin' links to and includes pictures of a system that isn't even marginally related. It's a totally different thing. <laughs> it's just completely different. Oh, my heavens. So, I, I seriously, if you have any d- additional details, especially if you have binary or source code 4W, hit me up. Get a hold of me. Uh, my uh, my email address is simply Brian with a Y at lunduke.com. Email me. Um, I would love to be able to to take detailed screenshots to get things up and running to archive it to document the W Windows system because it it is one of the most important pieces of software from the 1980s in terms of historical significance and impact on on just all of computing. We're talking about impact across Unix workstations and the BSDs and Linux and and so many systems. And it is it is all but lost to history. It, it is all but lost. And that is a terribly sad thing. That is a terribly, terribly sad thing. So if if anyone has even the slightest little bit of details, send it over to me, get a hold of me, and let's get this information published so that we can we can really try and preserve uh, this this important piece of computing history. Um, if you do not currently subscribe to lunduke.locals.com, to the Lunduke Journal of Technology, do so. Do so now. Support uh, the, the work that we do preserving this sort of history, documenting some of the criti- critical pieces of, of computing, both past, present, and future. And uh, we, we do some of the really the only real investigative journalism in, uh, in all of the, the technology world at this point. Uh, that's not really hyperbole or me puffing up my chest, though I do like to puff up my chest from time to time. Uh, we're just the only ones doing it. And that's because we have no ties to any software company. We don't take advertisement dollars. We don't do any of that stuff. We we exist purely based on subscriptions from people who like what we do. And that means that we can continue to speak truth to technological power. And we can, we can write the truth about whatever company, about Wikipedia, about Mozilla, about the Linux Foundation, about Microsoft, about Google, about whatever. And we never have to worry about losing ad dollars. Every other major publication does, whether it's directly because they have a relationship with those companies or indirectly because they use Google AdWords or AdSense and that that has the same effect. We don't have any of those problems. All thanks to all of you. So head over to lunduke.locals.com, pitch in a couple of dollars, or at least grab the free subscription so you get these articles as they come out because some of them are really friggin' fantastic. (laughs) All right, everybody, that's it for today. I hope you're doing something nerdy. Hope you get to have a whole lot of fun, and I hope someone gave you a high five today because you friggin' deserve it. And with that, I do declare, end video.